You are watching Melody Lane. With me, you're gonna have a great crafting time. Here's a shout out to a few of the people who support this channel on patreon.com slash Melody Lane. Robin, Wilma, Lisa, Irma, Christina, Mary Lou, Monique, Tara, Chris and Cindy, Carla, Deborah, Laura, Cynthia, Dawn, Leslie, Kelly, Shirley, Rose, Kathy, Sarah, Sheila, Patricia, Mary, Teresa, Melody, Marsha, Monica, Sarah, Kim, Beth, Debbie, Holly, Kristen, Natalie, Kathy, Lindsay, Nikki, Allison, Vicki, Robin, Elena, Phyllis, Patty, Joanne, Jude, and Sherry. A huge thank you to my co-sponsors. You guys are awesome. Good morning. Hey, everybody. This is the last class until... Um, let me look at the calendar. I'm not going to be live on September 26th, but there is going to be a recorded class, and I think I'm going to set it up as a premiere so we can all still come and chat. Um, I will be in the car, but I'll chat with you. Okay, and I just found out that Restream, the software I use to go to Twitch and Facebook at the same time, because right now, oh, I think we're on my personal Facebook page. I think uh, this is the last time we will be in more than one place because YouTube will not allow it anymore. I just found this out. So if you're on Facebook or Twitch, you want to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Melody Lane and subscribe because we will no longer be on the other channels. Um, Today we're doing viewer mail after this, and then we're doing the supporter hangout. If you support on Patreon for $5 or more, you get to come hang out in the Zoom with us. If you support at a lower level, you can watch on YouTube. It's unlisted, so you can't find it on my channel. It is shared with all of you that support in the area where you support. And today I was asked if I could share how to do gatefold cards that are like the lacy pretty for uh, invitations or cards and things. Uh, so let's get started. Oh, we do a giveaway, two giveaways every Saturday. One, you have to be live and you have to be on YouTube and you have to be able to be in the chat on YouTube for this one. So for um, the other giveaway, you can enter at any time and I randomly choose one person to come and um, not to come. I randomly choose a winner uh, to win $25 every week. I forgot to do it last week. So today we have two winners and I will make up for the weeks that we're missing in September because we're going to be missing the rest of the weeks in September. So October, there may be two winners each week. Okay, so um, should we start with the winners? Should I tell you how to enter? Let me, I wasn't even thinking about that. So let me drag that over here. There we go. Okay. So here's my channel. And um, here's just some different ones, different playlist. Um, you can click on any of those. You can click on videos, playlist, and how to enter this giveaway is you watch one of my videos, any video. I have 2,000 videos on my channel. So you can pick from any of them and you can. Here's a shout out to a few of the people who. 
you can share the video and tell us what you learned. So what you do is you click share and you can just copy this or you can click Facebook or Twitter or wherever and put the hashtag what I learned and you'll see it in where I show the winners. What, oh wait, not just what I learned, what I learned melody. Hashtag what I learned melody. You share the post and tell them what you learned from that video. So you can't just share the video. You have to tell us what you learned in that video. So it shares with other people on maybe something that they can learn from the videos. Okay, so first winner, we have Jill Jackson. Woohoo! Congratulations. Um she never knew about what wobbles were, so she learned about wobbles in this video and she put the hashtag what I learned melody. She made my project, so she put hashtag melody lane inspired. The melody lane inspired also enters her into my monthly or my weekly giveaway on um well it's on social media and I pick a $25 winner for that every Wednesday and that will continue through while I'm gone. Uh, so she shared the video and she shared what I learned Melody and she shared what she learned. So Jill Jackson contact me for your $25 and I am not going to contact the people. So if you want to know if you win, you have to watch these videos. Okay, and we have another winner because I forgot to do it last week. Colleen Yarnell, congratulations. Um, she learned different ways to weld in this video and she put hashtag what I learned melody and that's how I found it. It's what I learned melody. She shared the video and the hashtag and what she learned. So Colleen Yarnell, if you guys know Colleen, if she's not watching, you should let her know she won. So we have that. Congratulations. Okay. Um, one more thing. You guys, I'm giving away two joy machines. You click on MelodyLaneInspired.com. Go to What's Happening. And it's the top post. Giveaway. And if you want to learn about my all-day crop, it's also in this post. You do not have to go to the all-day crop to enter the giveaway. The all-day crop has its own giveaways of $1,000. This giveaway for the two joy machines are separate than this, but it's in the same post and same video. So check that out. All right, let's get started on Design Space. Um... I did see a question in the very beginning of this video about flatten. So before we get to the gatefold cards, I'm going to go over flatten again because so many people find it confusing. So I'm just going to say hello and um, we're just going to add some shapes. We're going to make them different colors. So I can just click on them, change the color. Let's say we want, whoops, whoops, <laughs> move that to the back. Okay, I just want it maybe something like this. Okay. So let's say I want to print this all together on one piece. Um, so let's select it all and click flatten. Look over here in the layers panel before I click. They all just say cut and they're all separate. When I click on flatten, it changes it all to one cut and print. You can no longer see the cut lines. The cut lines are going to be around the cut. Everywhere you see the grid, let's turn the grid more, it's going to cut out. Thank you, Dominique. You now have access to almost 800 projects. Um, so it's gonna cut out the square, it's gonna cut out the H, it's gonna cut out part of the E, it's gonna cut this out, it's gonna cut out the center of the E, uh, it will still be connected 
to this. So it's not gonna draw a line here. It's gonna cut like down this line, then around, and then it's still gonna be connected here. So this is normally what people don't want. Like, why would you want the square totally cut out if you're doing a print and cut? You could just cut it out and not print it. Um, so this will be cut out around this area like that. The triangle will not be cut out. It'll be cut out around here. It'll print in these colors but it will go around that because they're touching and overlapping in the print and cut. Anywhere you see the grid, it is going to be cut out. Now, uh, one problem people have is that's not what they want. They want like a square cut out. So you have to grab a square or whatever shape you want. It can be an image of a little boy if you want it to print on that. It can be anything. So we're gonna turn this to white because we don't want it to actually print. And we're gonna send it to the back. So now we have it set up so there's no grid behind it. So that should be good, right? No, it says that's only gonna cut. Let's just click that and we can't flatten it because you can't flatten only one image. You have to select it all. And if you want it centered, remember to align and center and then you can click flatten not attach flatten now it's all one this will cut out this square this works with text images pictures whatever you want if you don't want these cut out around the shape then you have to flatten it to something now let's undo this Okay, you go over there. Let's say, oh, let's unflatten. You can go down here and unflatten if it's already flattened. Let's say I wanted to do this. We're gonna flatten. We're not grouping, we're not attaching, we're only flattening. So now this hello will be fine. It will not cut out singly. It will cut out this shape around the green, around the purple, and that. It will also cut out this little hole right here because I can see the grid through that. I hope that makes sense. Flatten is only used for print and cut. If you flatten something, thanks for subscribing, Emily, it will change it to print. If you don't want it to print, then you do not flatten. Okay. Let's just new, we're done with this. Okay, so now we're going to make, um, do I have a, let me look at my projects. I didn't save it. I made one. <clears throat> okay, oh, we forgot. New images of the week. So to find the cartridges that you have linked or to find the image sets, to find new images, you can always go to image sets. If you're on an iPad or mobile device, you'll see highlighted categories. Click highlighted categories and you'll get these options and click on image sets. And then we have these Harry Potter ones. We gotta go down to the new ones. And we have some new ones, homeschool phrases. 18 images. This is cute. Teachers slash mama, mom's pet. Homeschool life. And then music player icons. For those of you, there's 35 of them. For those of you who like the Spotify, it has all the images in here. Day of the Dead animals. There's 30 of them. I like that gecko and that fish. Bachelorette time, 25 images for bachelorettes. It looks like it has multiple languages. Kids face mask decals. So you can put these on face masks. There's 42. Now we're not gonna go through all these. You can do that on your own. Drawn card sentiments. 
I'm so sorry. Thank you. Miss you. I love you. 20 images. So these are cut out behind it and then drawn on it. Like this, I'm so sorry. It will cut out, I'm so sorry, and draw on it also. And then we have classic Halloween, 20 images. These are for vinyl or drawing. So they have them for both. And then Coco Twins, I think we did last time. Yeah, we did the rest of these last week. <clears throat> so anytime you're looking for um, new images, just go to image sets. Okay, now today I'm going to tell you how to find um, like lacy images that you can use. I'm going to go to Edge. Um, I'm in uh, image sets, so I searched edge. So there's different uh, edge ones. This is edge to edge two. And it just depends on the image that you want on your card. You can do the squares. You have to be careful. Some of them may not work as well as what you want. This one looks neat. We could try that one. That one would be neat. Not all of them will work for what you want. You just have to try them. Always do a test cut. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to just browse all images and I'm gonna put in doily. And these will work also. There's one in here. I like this one with the hearts. I tried one with that, but uh, there's many that you can choose from. That would be neat too. If they have two colors, they have two layers, but you do not have to use all the layers. You can just use one layer. Okay, there's lots of these. Okay, so we have two, that's enough. You can scroll through there and see more. Elena, if you don't know how I did that, you can rewatch the video and go back. All I did was click on images and uh, go to all images and browse doily. Okay, so I've done this one. You guys haven't seen it, but I've done it. Um, so there's two options of cards. You could do a square card or you could do, uh, like a portrait card, like five by seven. So we need to grab a shape. Um, we will do this one in a square. So we'll just keep it a square, but let's say, um, we'll do five and a half inches change it to white let's change the background color so you can see this better and yellow okay so let's move this to the front we need this to be the same size so we're going to do 5.5 Okay, so now the first thing we have to do is we have to cut this in half. So I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna use this as my knife, make it a little bigger. Oh, but I need to know the center of this. And you can't align these two things and get this in the center of that. If you can, let me know. We're going to put a line in the center first. So here's our score line. I'm gonna change this to a cut line just so we can see it better. And I'm putting it above and below because it's hard to see. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my lines so you can see this better. So we have to center this. 
So I have the cut line and the circle selected. You can tell in the layers panel, oh, we're not gonna be able to slice because it has all these layers over here. I don't think. Let me bring those up. We're gonna ungroup. We're gonna select those. And I'm just gonna delete these other ones. So now we only have one layer here. And selected the line and the doily and click align center. So now I can see where this line is in the very center of it. So I can move this, I'm gonna send it to the front and I'm gonna line it up with that line right there. I can zoom in, make sure I have it perfectly. Okay, zoom back out. Now we have to grab just this white circle, hold your shift down and then grab this. You do not want to grab the line, okay? Whoops, I clicked off of it. Okay, select that, select that. We have those two selected. Now we can slice. It will not allow you to slice if you have that cut line in there because that would cause it to have three images. So we can delete these. I'm just gonna hide this. And now we have separate pieces. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over here. So now what we need to do is bring these here and weld them. Uh, if you wanna know what it's gonna look like when it's done, it's gonna look like this. So it'll look like this when it's closed. Does that make sense? Have you guys learned anything yet today? Okay, so this isn't this beautiful? I really like this one. Uh, I don't know what this image is called. We can find out. Let's right click here, go to image. Now why did it give us the square? Hold on. Oh, is that because I sliced it? Oh, I clicked on square. Rose doily. Um, there's the number M2359744. Just because I think it's pretty. <laughs> okay. Um, Uh, the cut line would cut it in half if you attached it to the center, but that's after you cut it. So we want it cut in half before we actually go to cut it. That would mean we would have to, no, it wouldn't work. You could not use the cut line to cut it in half because we need it cut in half before we do this. So what we're doing is we have to move these over here. And another thing to make this easier, I'm gonna duplicate this square. I'm gonna change the square to score. So I can put this back on here so it will score in the exact spot I need it to score. I don't have to deal with the score lines and lining them up perfectly. I do wanna line these up perfectly. So I'm gonna click align and click top. So they're all lined up, but I need to zoom in to make sure this is overlapping just a teeny bit so it will weld to it. See how this one? If you can see that, there's a little space between the purple and the white. That means it will not weld together. We can say weld, it'll look like it's weld, but when it cuts, this piece is gonna be cut off. So we wanna just move it over just a little bit. And because we moved it, I suggest 
to um, align it again to the top. Now, one thing we could do, uh, because any part you're moving over, because this is um, the exact size we need, it's overlapping a little, and so will this, we could unlock the square and make the width just a little bit wider. So it was 5.5. So I'm making the width width 5.52. And it will add just a little bit more room. And I can add that just like this. So it overlaps a little bit. And, okay, now we're going back. Where's my score line? Now the score line did not change the width. So it will, let me just, it will score where it needs to score so the card will stay the same. And we could overlap that with it. Let me zoom in over on this side too. I'm zooming back out. I'm going to align it one more time just to be sure. Align top. Just because I moved them, you might have made a mistake. So we're going to select all three of these and we're going to weld. Now, one thing you could do before you weld, let's do this again. I, I did undo to bring it back. I'm going to duplicate these, group them, and hide them. That way, if I do my test cut and this does not work out correctly, I have these three place pieces that I can try again and get it just a little bit better. So now let's go ahead and weld. So now we can test that, but we wanna bring this. We're gonna move this to the front fit up there. I'm just going to select them both and align and center. So now the score lines are right here where they should be. They're kind of hard to see, but I'm going to attach them. So now when I make the card, we'll fold it here and it will go into the middle. Does that make sense? Can you guys do this? Yeah, you also want to check to make sure that this cuts out properly because it is a lot of little pieces. You may want to use the black um, housing for the, uh, what's the name? Deep point blade the deep point blade uh it's great for intricate items and you can use a setting intricate card stock there is a setting for intricate card stock okay so this is for a square card but let's say we want um a port like a five by seven okay so let's add a shape we're gonna make the shape five by seven. So the width will be five. Height seven. So we want it this size. And so we want this to be the height seven, but we want the width to be five. Oh, I forgot to unlock it. Seven. There we go. Um, let me move this to the back. Okay, so we need to cut this. So we're doing the same thing again. It's just going to be more oval. Uh, I want to duplicate this first. Change it to score. So we have that. We're going to duplicate this just to make it our knife. 
make it a little bigger and zoom out a little so we have more room. And we need our line. I'm going to change it to cut just so we can see it better. And we need to find the center. So we're going to align center. Now we have a guide to bring our knife square rectangle over to make sure it's in the center. We select the doily, hold shift down, select the box that we're cutting it with and click on slice. Welcome Lanny. Okay, let's go back. We can delete these. We can, I would just like to save it in the layers panel. So now we have separate pieces. So we can bring these over to see what this will look like. It looks kind of funny like this as an oval, but when you put it over in a card, I think it's pretty. Is that not pretty? Oh, and we can also put another piece of paper in here too, if you like. Uh, we'll do that when we're done. So we'll see, this is, this looks pretty. So uh, let's do that. We need to put these, we're gonna move this square out of our way. Put this on the edge, put this on the edge. Let's make our width just a little bit more. We're only at five inch, so let's put 5.2. And it made it a little bit bigger. I think that might be too much. I think 5.02 is what I want. Just to make it a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna make sure this is in the back. It must be in the back because I can't move it. So I can see this is overlapping that a little bit, a little bit more than we need. Oh, yeah. Whoops. There. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Overlap that just. A little bit now we're not going to worry about where we're folding it because we will we have that uh, score square that we know exactly where it should fold so now let's select these and click align and align top so they're all even and we can remember you might want to duplicate and save it before you weld I'm just gonna go ahead and weld Okay, now when you weld something, it always changes the color. And look what it did. It filled in our hearts there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to undo that. What size is this? Okay, I'm going to group and duplicate because in order to make it not do that. Sometimes you have to zoom out as much as you can and take this and make it bigger. So now it's 49 inches wide and we're gonna try to weld it now. And now it does not have those filled in hearts. And so we can bring it back down. This is why I duplicated it so I'd have one the correct size. So we're gonna zoom back out. Now we need to make sure these are the same size. And they're not. There. Now they look the same because I can't see the one below it. So we're going to hide those if we want to use those later. We can make these be any color we want. Now, if this would be great for Valentine's Day, I want to bring a shape in just to fit inside. And you could write on this piece, make that white. So then this way, the pieces here 
will be red on white. So I would do the same thing with this one over here. If you want this to be white, I would bring in another box. And I would leave a frame around it. See how there's a little frame around each one to make it really pretty? And then when this closes, you'll see it'll stand out more. You'll see that white here. Let me just duplicate this just so I can give you a little. So when you close it, it'll look like that. We'll do the same thing with this. Duplicate. And this one will look like that. And then it'll have one also over here. Is that pretty? Is that hard? Do you guys think you can do that? I need a drink. Yeah, always enlarge if you can't see it perfectly. <sighs> Miss Joan can see clearly now. Do we have any questions on this? Yeah, now, don't just go to Design Space if you're new to Design Space and think, oh, I watched that video, I can go do it now. You might miss a step. So what I suggest is you watch the video, pause the video, and then you do what I just did in Design Space. And if you can just keep going, just keep going. And if it turns out great, that's great. Now, if you want to add text, let me show you how to add text. So let's move these out of the way. You know what, I'm gonna save this. Um, what do I call these? I'm gonna call it Rose Gatefold, because I'm probably gonna put the other one in a different project, so they're not in the same. I will share these later with my Patreon supporters and YouTube supporters and all supporters who get my projects. But I'll fix it up before I do that. <laughs> I won't leave all these things in here for you. Okay, so let's say you wanna do an invitation. You just type text. You are invited. And then you switch the style to writing. Now you can, oops, it's hard to grab this. You have to actually click on the actual letters. We want a different font for that. So we're gonna go to filter and make sure we're only looking at writing fonts. Let's go to this one. Now, this one, the letters look so far apart. Okay, these lines are not needed. They were just for a guide. So what we're gonna have to do is ungroup. I'm gonna move this Y over using my keys on my keyboard. You know what, if you wanted that Y to be bigger, maybe the I to be bigger, you could totally do that. It's your invitation. You can do anything you want to do. So I'm clicking these. I'm using the keyboard to scoot them over a little to make sure they stay perfectly like that. I'm going to move this over just this way a bit. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to line those letters up. Line that up. Now, once I get it how I want it, I'm going to select those and I'm going to attach those together. 
I'm going to select the, I'm going to move that O U a little. I'm going to select those and attach. These I need to move over. So I use my keyboard. Whoops. I can't always get it perfect. Okay, I'm going to attach those. Now I'm going to zoom out. And you can put these how you want. Now, these are kind of hard to line up because if I were to line those up, like say a line bottom, they're gonna go like that because it's gonna be the bottom of the U. Um, so that's kinda, you just gotta, oh, you know what you could do? We're gonna make a guide. Let's change it to cut so it's solid. We're going to hold down the shift key while we move this little arrow up here. Because if we hold down the shift key, it gets it perfect. If we don't hold down the shift key, it goes like this, and then we don't know which way that it's actually perfect, okay? It's not perfect that way. Let's undo. So it'll go back to being perfect. And we could add this line right here. Let's zoom in. There we go. Now, if we want to add more words, we could just move this line down and do that. You can make anything, you know, you'd want to add a lot more things to an invitation. <laughs> but I'm just showing you how to do it if you want. That so many people say, well, how do you make an invitation? You just write what you want it and set the letters how you like them. And that's it. Yes, it is very easy. Just zoom in. Use this zoom. And this is Anna's fancy lettering. Zoom it back up. So then you would do the same thing to this piece. You know, whatever you want. All right, did you guys learn something? Uh, tell me in the chat what you learned and we'll get ready for our giveaway for $15. Do you guys think you can do this? I think you can do this. I think you can do this if you didn't even open your box for your Cricut yet. What about a pocket? Gemma Bradley, great idea. Okay, so if you want a pocket, you guys keep chatting, tell me what you learned because um, we're gonna do the giveaway. Mr. Nightbot, is Nightbot working? Have you guys seen Nightbot? I haven't noticed. He should be. How to do the gatefold card. Oh, that's what you learned. <laughs> okay, like say you wanted a pocket down here at the bottom. Uh, let me just duplicate this real fast. Oh, and when you do this, these, you want to attach them to this paper. So you'd move this out of the way. Get everything set like you want it. Select it all and click attach. Okay, don't forget the attaching part. You'll find out when you hit make it, it's not attached. Okay. So I'm going to make a little pocket. Um, let's 
So I'm adding another square. I'm going to duplicate that square. Um, you know what? I'm going to duplicate that square again and change it to score. So we have that score one right over here. We're saving that. I'm going, whoops, I'm going to, okay, you're in the way. There we go. Unlock this. I'm going to make it a little shorter and a little wider. So what I'm doing now is I'm making a pocket. So I'm going to put little flaps on the edge of the pocket. So I'm going to take these two little squares, this one and this one, and we're going to weld those. And then I'm going to weld them to the bottom of this. Weld. Okay, now we're going to find that square. That Where is that at? It's up here. This one that I scored. We're going to put that right down here. Okay, I didn't do this very evenly. I better undo this. Let's select them both and align center horizontally. Oh, that's because this one is a little wider. There, that's good. Okay, I'm going to weld it to that. Grab this square. We're going to bring it to the front. All the way to the bottom. And then select that and attach. So now to make a pocket, let's zoom out so you can see. You would fold this up, fold these little uh, edges on the side, and you would glue these sides down up here. And then you would have a little pocket this big. Uh, before you attach it, you could put it up here to see how big you want the pocket. Like, say we've already welded it like we did and I need to test how, what the size of the pocket is so I know where I can add writing. So I'm just gonna move this, kind of make it the same size. And then I would know my pocket will go up to this area here. So if you wanted a pocket there, you could do your writing up here and put a little pocket in here. So that's how you add a pocket, you just add the size of the pocket. You don't even have to have these little flips. Uh, you could just glue the edge of the paper up. But this way it gives it a little bit more room. And so you'd fold those in and glue the other side onto this area. Okay, is Nightbot here? He should be here. Okay, Kelly has a great question. Um, there's Nightbot, he is here, okay. Kelly has a great question. If I created this in DS and then decided I wanted each card to be its own file, that's what I'm going to do. How could I save it as two separate files? Um, so what I would do is I have this as the rose gatefold, so I'm only gonna keep this one down here. I'm not gonna keep this one in that file. So what I'm gonna do, can you guys see? I can't see what you see, okay. Click save then click save as so save as it'll ask for this 
I will call it heart because those have a heart shape inside. And then save. So now I have two different files. I could then delete this. Why can I not remember how to delete? Delete these, save, and just save. Don't save as. So now let's go to my projects. So now I have the heart one, and then I have the rose one the same. So I'm going to go back to the rose one. Now it changes the background back to um, what it was. Now see, I didn't save this after we did the pocket thing. So that's why the pocket thing isn't there, and we had deleted these, but I didn't save it after that part. So this is called the rose one, so we can get rid of all this. We can get rid of those. We just move these up and save. So now I have two new projects. Now, let's say I make this a certain card for something. Let's say I want to make one for an anniversary or something, and I wanted it in a separate file. I could do that. I could click Save As and do it again. Now, if we go to my projects, we'll see the rose one and the heart one. And then this one is what we've saved. We're going to replace what we had there. And we have this one. We have to attach these to this piece. Okay, we're going to do the giveaway right now. If you guys have been chatting, you're entered into the giveaway. We have a winner. <laughs> okay. Do you guys want to see who the winner is? Gina Martin. Congratulations. Please contact me through my website. I see you're chatting up a storm. Yes, the Explorer will do the intricate cuts as well. So uh, Gina, at the you can click over here on my website. You can click more and then click contact, or you can just go down to the bottom of any page Contact me. I need to know if you want it. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> if you want it through um, PayPal or Amazon gift card, I'll need the email for wherever you want it sent. Okay, I'm trying to look at your questions and so if you all want to enter into the $25 giveaway for sharing the video thanks for the blessings uh, you can do that all you have to do share the video hashtag what I learned and all of you watching have already learned something today in today's video well I think you have And so Tuesday, we're going on a road trip. If you are a supporter of mine, I just posted this yesterday. I just got the idea from Betsy, uh, who she called dibs, her and Fatima called dibs on the back seat, and she wanted to send me her Bitmoji. She says she didn't have enough time to actually print it and send it. So she said, if I could print it, I said, oh my gosh, that's an amazing idea. So I'm going to print hers and put hers on the actual headrest, her and Fatima, as they call dibs. But then I have these big map boards that I am collecting. Anybody who supports at a dollar or more, anywhere, I'm going to try. I have 11 of these pages printed out. I'm going to spend 
all my packing time printing out bitmojis with your names uh, to ride along in the back seat. Won't this be fun on our road trip? Three days there, three or four days back. I don't know. It's going to be fun. Of course, I don't have them all printed yet. But I've started. Had a lot of printer trouble. Last night, I was up for a few hours trying to fix my printer. This morning, it's working. I was about to go buy a new printer. And if I have to buy a new printer to get them all printed, I will. So, um, if you're a supporter, I posted um, in the places, uh, in my Patreon group, that's where I've gotten these so far. It's really easy to grab your name and your Bitmoji in the same screenshot, or um, I'm having them email them to me. We're going to Las Vegas, and we're driving an electric car. Oh, Sherry, I have your box. We're going to do viewer mail. You can email it to MelodyLaneDesigns at gmail.com. It can be a Bitmoji or an Apple Moji, like the Apple has a new emoji things. That's what a lot of these are. <laughs> Joan, you're funny. Okay. Uh, Joan, send me your Bitmoji too, if you have one. We are staying at the Westgate. It's very, it's free to make the Bitmoji. You can go to bitmoji.com, I think. Oh, and uh, for the supporters of $5 or more through Patreon, you get a free monthly crop every month. Um, it's just a two-hour crop in on a Tuesday evening. And to sign up for that crop, it will be on Patreon tomorrow afternoon. Donna, uh, I have you and George in my thing for the road trip. Thank you, Gina. Uh, Tracy, you can, um, Tracy, are you in my Patreon Facebook group? If you're in there, you just put it in the comments there. Um, you don't send it, you can email it if you need to, or you can just post it in the comments on that post on Patreon. But you can just send it an email. Yeah, Bitmoji is part of Snapchat. I don't do Snapchat, but I use Bitmoji. There's probably lots of videos on how to make a Bitmoji. You make it look like yourself. And it's fun. There will be a video Tuesday at noon. It will be a premiere video, which means we can chat and watch it. Uh, we show um, a 30-foot decal that the Villages Cricket Club did for a school. Not 30 inches, 30 feet. It's across their cafeteria all the way it's huge. <laughs> uh, to make one, you just go to bitmoji.com and you just follow the steps. And if you don't understand it, then there's lots of videos. Search bit, how to make a bitmoji on YouTube.
Okay. Uh, what time? We're leaving in the afternoon. Judy, I will look for your Bitmoji. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go because we have viewer mail. So hang out on my channel and I'll be right back live with viewer mail. Bye, guys.